Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a team that won a grassroots tournament over in Japan recently featuring Tyranitar and Houndstone. Tyranitar is just one of the stronger Pokemon in Series 2 in my opinion, especially because it matches up fairly well into Pokemon like Fluttermane as well as the Iron Bundle. And Houndstone is a Pokemon that doesn't really see very much play, but this team opened my eyes to just how strong it can be. This Houndstone is interesting, it has support oriented moves like Will-O-Wisp, which you can use in the early game to burn physical attackers, but you also have Last Respects as well as Play Rough, which can be pretty solid damage, especially in the late game, with Last Respects kind of stacking up after your Pokemon have fainted. And so, yeah, I think it's a really cool team, and Tyranitar and Houndstone in general is a very fun duo, and so I'm excited to feature it. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel really helps out a ton anyway thanks as always for joining me and let's get started first of all a huge thank you to golden flare one for building and sharing this team i've linked their twitter down in the description below as well as a rental and a paste and they were able to win a grassroots tournament over in japan called the terra square off and they went undefeated to win that tournament which is really impressive and so yeah obviously i was drawn to the team primarily because of houndstone but it also just has great tusk talonflame hyper offense which is a really strong core in the format right now i think it's one of the fundamental teams that you should either learn how to play or go up against and so i also wanted to feature it because of that. So let's get started and talk about Houndstone. The main idea behind Houndstone is that it has a pretty interesting set of attacks, right? You've got Will-O-Wisp, which is obviously super strong when paired with Sand Rush and Tyranitar. You're able to also be immune to fake outs from things like Iron Hands, for example, and potentially be able to burn that, which is really nice. And Last Respects is just a pretty awesome move. It essentially gets an increase in base power for every fainted party member you have, and so you can use Houndstone in the late game to really clean up things, right? After a couple two Pokemon have fainted, for example, bring it out, you have this super powerful same type attack bonus boosted Last Respects, which is really nice, and this can just be a really potent late game sweeper. Play Rough also gives you some pretty nice coverage and can also catch things off guard, which is really sweet. And Destiny Bond is the final move. Uh, I think it's kind of hard to utilize but basically you can catch your opponents off guard with it, click it, and then basically trade Houndstone, especially when Houndstone's at pretty low HP. Uh, with a Citrus Berry here, you're able to sustain for quite a while as well, and Fairy allows you to get rid of your weakness to Dark while also dealing more damage with Play Rough, which is kind of cool. So overall, I think Houndstone is interesting because it can kind of be a utility-based Pokemon in the early game, but can also be a really strong late-game sweeper after a couple of your own Pokemon have fainted thanks to the power of Last Respects. Houndstone is paired with the Tyranitar here. Assault Tyranitar really is just one of the strongest Pokemon in the format, as I mentioned, and I think that it's really interesting because Tyranitar just did not see very much usage in Series 1 when Scarlet and Violet first came out, but that was because Meowskarada and Golden Go were kind of running everywhere. Meowskarada usage has definitely taken a huge, huge dive, and so with and Tyranitar also just matches up really well into Pokemon that are more meta now, such as the Iron Bundle or the Fluttermane, and so with the Assault Vest, this Pokemon can just survive for a really long time while also dishing out huge amounts of damage. You've got Rock Slide, a Assurance, Low Kick, and Heavy Slam. The main thing here is that you actually don't have Terra Blast, but Heavy Slam is really valuable into opposing Flutter Mains, for example. You can just threaten that with the one-hit knockout. Low Kick, really good into King Gambit. Assurance synergizes really nicely with Houndstone and really any Pokemon on this team where you get a hit off and then Assurance can finish it off. And Rock Slide, obviously, because it's Tyranitar. You still have Flying Terra here to get rid of your weaknesses to ground and fighting, which is very valuable. So Tyranitar, Houndstone, very strong lead duo for this team. You've also got Great Tusk here. This is a pretty standard admin max attack Great Tusk with Focus Ash. Sometimes you'll see a Life Orb on Great Tusk on these Talonflame teams, but the idea with Focus Ash is it guarantees you get at least one really powerful attack off here. Standard moveset, and then you've got Ground Terra to just further increase the damage output of Earthquake and Headlong Rush. Uh, Great Tusk and Talonflame, by the way, really solid lead duo for this team because you can just immediately go for Tailwind into Earthquakes, and Earthquakes from this Pokemon just deal so much damage. It's kind of like, feels like a slightly better Garchomp, honestly. And so, yeah, Talonflame here, Safety Goggle, so it helps you against Brute Bonnet and Amoongus, for example. Also ignores their Rage Powders. You've got Brave Bird, will Taunt, and Tailwind, and so you don't have Flare Blitz here. Instead, you have, you know, a lot of utility between Taunt and will Taunt is nice in shutting down opposing Trick Room-oriented teams and just set up in general, and Will-O-Wisp also really valuable here. Double Will-O-Wisp on this team is really nice, and it gives you multiple ways to potentially burn Don Dozo, for example. To round out the team, you've got Iron Bundle, and this is just the classic booster energy set. 
Booster Energy Iron Bundle synergizes really nicely when you have this kind of offense, because you can just, like, Icy Wind opposing Pokemon and utilize Great Tusk and Golden Go to just outspeed things immediately, and Icy Wind in general just sets up for, you know, Tyranitar and Houndstone later on in the battle as well, and this moveset is basically as standard as it gets for a Booster Energy Iron Bundle. So, in terms of leads, I've had a lot of different ways that I've approached with the team. Tyranitar Houndstone is one lead, Talonflame Great Tusk is one, I think Iron Bundle with Golden Go or Iron Bundle with Great Tusk is solid, I think Talonflame with Golden Go can be powerful if they don't have Great Golden Go answers immediately, for example. Tailwind, set up uh, a nasty plot or just click make it rain. No, Talonflame Flames, you get a free switch in and then you just go from there. The main thing is with Houndstone here, you got to be a little bit careful about how to utilize Houndstone because it's not exactly super powerful in the early game, especially when you haven't gotten stacks up with Last Respects, but it can have an incredible amount of utility, right? Thanks to Will-O-Wisp. And so, yeah, if you're leading Tyranitar Houndstone, think about how you want to utilize it. For example, I'm often looking for it as a, as a lead if my opponent has multiple strong physical attackers and I'm aiming to burn immediately. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But overall, this is a really fun kind of hyper offensive team that features a unique Pokemon in Houndstone, so I'm really excited to try it out. So in terms of weaknesses, the first thing I want to highlight is that I think this is one of the most consistent teams that I've tried out so far in Series 2, and in a lot of the practice games I had that turned into losses, the losses were more so because I didn't use the team properly, rather than the team basically having holes in the team building process. That's always a really good sign in my opinion, because it shows that you at least have answers and tools to most of the Pokemon and strategies that you're going to go up against, right? And so, yeah, I think I'm just going to quickly highlight some of the mistakes that I made while playing with this team. I think the first one is basically being a little bit greedy on my Terras. I had games where, like, if I just Terra Talonflame turn 1 with Brave Bird or Terra Great Tusk with the Ground Terra immediately, I can get a big knockout that my opponent's not necessarily expecting and snowball the game out of control. Instead, a lot of those situations, I would, like, hold out on my Terra, but then get punished pretty heavily in response. For example, I had a game where I had Great Tusk, and they intimidated my Great Tusk, and even a Hydro Pump from Bundle and a Headlong Rush was not able to KO an Iron Hands. It had, like, 5% left, and then the Iron Hands was able to get a one-hit knockout on to my Iron Bundle in return, and that's a really big deal because my opponent also had Palafin on that team, I believe. And so that's a really interesting interaction, right? Where Water-type Pokemon actually do really well into a lot of these Pokemon, especially Tyranitar and the Great Tusk and the Talonflame, but Bundle obviously is pretty solid as an answer into a lot of Water-type Pokemon, especially things like Palafin and Dondozo because you've already got a pretty solid base defense, right? And so... Iron Bundle is really important, but if you just lose it before uh, you can really get much value out of it, then the Water-type Pokemon can cause a lot more issues for the rest of the team. And so that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Uh, Ground-type attacks can be pretty scary, especially with Great Tusk, Tyranitar, and Golden Go. Obviously, Tyranitar has Flying Terra, so it's not necessarily just something that will, you know, definitively beat you because you can just Flying Terra to get around it. But you know, there are a lot of Pokemon that take a fair amount of damage from Ground-type Pokemon, so keep that in mind. Uh, I think Hard Trick Room is something that has scared me a little bit as well. You do have answers with it. For example, Talonflame can taunt, but if they have Fake Out or Indie D follow me, then you don't necessarily really get the taunt off. Uh, Tyranitar is generally going to be one of the better answers into Trick Room teams, but Houndstone can be interesting, especially with will o -Wisp pressure. So you can get a couple of valuable will o -Wisps off. Uh, Trick Room struggles a little bit more. Uh, opposing Weather naturally can be a little bit tricky for Tyranitar and Houndstone, so if they have like Pelipper plus Palafin, for example, that can be scary. Uh, Torkoal under Trick Room can be a little bit uh, tough to go up against as well, especially because it matches up super well into the majority of the Pokemon other than Tyranitar, and so like a well-protected Torkoal under Trick Room with something else to pressure Tyranitar can also be pretty scary. Also, a lot of the damage on this team comes from physically-oriented Pokemon, but obviously you have a good spread between special and physical, like two special attackers, four physical attackers, but keep in mind if you index really heavily on the physical side, for example, if you go with the mode with Talonflame, Tusk, Tyranitar, and Houndstone, then obviously things like Will-O-Wisp, Intimidate, Reflect have a lot more value against the team. And so that can be pretty scary, especially if you're not able to pick up these knockouts and, you know, they survive and they KO you in return. So yeah, those are just a couple of things that I've run into, but let's get into the battles. All right, what do we got here? Tusk, Grimmsnarl, Golden Go, Amoongus, Volcarona, and the Baxcalibur. Interesting. Uh, I think Grimmsnarl scares me a lot. Water Terra Golden Go with Nasty Plot here feels really solid, as does Talonflame with will o -Wisp Pressure. Bundle theoretically looks good here, but my fear is that... Like, they are able to just get, set up screens. I can't actually do much against them. So, I'm kind of interested in, like, a Talonflame Golden Go lead with Tyranitar and the Houndstone in the back, I think. The general idea is, if they lead Grimstar, I can pressure it down quickly with a knockout with Golden Go, and eliminating Grimstar so that they can only set up one of two screens is valuable. Talonflame can Will-O-Wisp into the Tusk, into the 
Back to Caliber, we have Brave Bird Pressure and a Volcarona. And since this is Water Terror, I'm not as worried about the Volcarona either. So I like this. I think the main thing is that our Great Tusk is really solid here as well. Um, one possible combo is just Talonflame Tusk, Tailwind Earthquake. I think the main thing here is with them having Grimmsnarl, I expect screens, right? And so I want to do my best to essentially not let them set up as much as they'd like to. And so the Golden Goal lead here is mainly to try to, yeah, punish Grimmsnarl. They lead Grimmsnarl here, which I'm happy to see. Okay, cool. I think the question here is whether or not I want to contemplate terroring immediately with Golden Go. I'm not sure it's completely necessary. One thing to note here is I also don't have Flare Blitz, so dealing damage onto their Golden Go is going to be a little bit tougher. The other debate is whether or not I even need to Tailwind on the first turn, because I could theoretically stagger it by a turn and go for like both Brave Bird plus make it rain here. I think it's fine to Tailwind here. Uh, Flying Terra with Tyranitar. It does help out against the Great Tusk in the back, so... I guess they could have Sucker Punch, though. I actually am going to Terra here. I don't want to risk things. Like... Nah, but I mean, if it, even if they Sucker Punch with Tailwind, I should outspeed Golden Go. So, maybe this was, like, not fully necessary, but... I just like the idea of my Golden Go just guaranteeing that it gets this Make It Rain off. I guess unless they click Fake Out into Golden Go, which would be a crazy read. Okay, no switches, no Terras, no Protects. Cool, that works for me. Oh my gosh, they actually had Sucker Punch. <laughs> oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> uh, do get a crit onto their Golden Go, which is pretty lucky. And it's Focus Sash Grimmsnarl. Fascinating. They're probably Shadow Balling here, right? The fact that that was a crit onto Golden Go power gem that makes me think they're assault vested honestly anyway what a turn one to start the battle that's not how i expected things to play out at all but okay um I'm bringing tyranitar now <laughs> i was like i'm worried about sucker punch what are the odds they have it they actually ended up having it uh i can just click assurance into golden goal now and nasty plot Houndstone's kind of just waiting in the back right now as well for this late game. But I think with Tailwind set up... And with Assurance Pressure here, things look pretty good. I'm pretty sure that's Assault Vest Golden Go, right? Like, it took 50% for Make It Rain from a critical hit. So then I guess it's interesting if you're my opponent, do you contemplate going for a Terra with Golden Go? Because basically here, I'm taking advantage of the fact that Sam can knock out Grimmsnarl on Assurance. I would expect to still be able to KO Golden Go here. And if it's a double knockout and I get a Nasty Plot off, yeah, they don't go for any Switches or Terras. Like now I'm at plus one with Golden Go under Tailwind with the Water Terra defensively as well. There's Assurance. Nice. Okay. Golden goes down. Grimstar should faint from sand now. So now I've got plus one life orb make it rain from Golden Go, as well as a Tyranitar with assurance pressure. They could have Volcarona. Baxcalibur. Yep, there's the Bax. And Tusk. Okay, works for me. Uh. Booster energy for what an attack boost? Oh, it's speed. Okay, well, Houndstone's really good against both of these in the end game now, that's for sure. Uh, I'm definitely just clicking Make It Rain with Golden Go. The question is who else I target? Because it could be like Fire, Terra, Baxcalibur, Great Tusk, Protect right now, right? But you could go the other way around as well. I don't mind clicking Rock Slide here because it covers for a lot of the Terras they could go for. Yeah, I'll Rock Slide and make it rain here. I think you could also go Protect Baxcalibur and just Ground Terra your Tusk, but they're actually going to Terra the Baxcalibur into water. Okay, that's fine. Although that should mean Great Tusk protecting here, right? Oh! Okay. They actually, because of the speed boost, are faster than both of my Pokemon. 
Uh, that could have played out a lot worse if they actually targeted Golden Go rather than the Tyranitar. Because now Make Your Range should just KO the Great Tusk, and it's a 1v1 Houndstone against Baxcalibur. I'm pretty sure Last Respects gets the knockout after Golden Go faints here, right? Lake Glaive Rush. Uh, I guess I could have protected Golden Go there, sacrificed T-Tar to get the free switch in, but there was no guarantee they were going to attack with both Pokemon there. Cool. Now we have the Houndstone to just finish things off for this endgame. And this is one of the beautiful things about late game Houndstone, right? Bring it out. Sandstorm and Tailwind is up. We just click Last Respects here. Everything else is fainted. Same time attack bonus. Should get the KO. Booster energy with plus speed is pretty interesting. They go for Ice Shard, but that's fine. Yeah, we get last respects here. Even if they got the crit there, we would have survived anyway. So, Houndstone's really nice for kind of this late game cleanup potential. And that's what we were able to execute here in this battle. But yeah, I think if the Tusk had actually clicked close combat onto the... Yeah, if you click close combat onto the Golden Ghost slot, I guess the thing is then Tyranitar survives the turn, right? So I get Rock Slide off. And then I bring in Houndstone, and then Houndstone can just Last Respects. They can play rough to KO the Tusk if I wasn't confident Last Respects was going to get the knockout. Then the question is a Protect Mind game between Houndstone, or sorry, between Great Tusk and Baxcalibur the subsequent turn. But because they targeted down Tyranitar, the game uh, was basically like a guaranteed win for us with Houndstone in the back. So, yeah. Anyway, though, that's the pressure of late game Houndstone being able to take advantage of the sand and just deal lots of damage with uh, Last Respects is super, super nice. Okay, Ferrigraph, King Gambit, Golden Go, Mimikyu, Iron Hands, and the Iron Bundle. Hmm. Seeing Ferrigraph makes me want to go like Tyranitar and Houndstone. I'm actually intrigued by double Ghost Lead here, interestingly enough. Mainly because of fear of um, Iron Hands plus Ferrigraph. Trick Room is kind of nasty to go up against. And we don't have Ghost Terra Talon Flame here. I like Tyranitar and Tusk here, I think. Yeah, Iron Bundle can be okay into a lot of teams, especially teams that are like fast paced but like don't outspeed booster energy Iron Bundle. But otherwise, I don't really like value it as much in other. It's also really good into like Dondozo, especially if it's like Dragon Terra Dondozo, right? Because you can just outspeed and freeze dry um, pretty continuously, which is nice. So I'd say the bundle is a pretty critical piece to the team, but I have just missed so many Hydro Pumps with this Pokemon that it gives me anxiety when using it. <laughs> this is it's so frail as well, you know? So, yeah. The general idea with Golden Go and Houndstone here is that I'm immune to Fake Out from the Iron Hands. If you go Iron Hands plus the Ferrigraph. You know, the interesting thing is I'm actually not sure I can KO Ferrigraph. Because Ferrigraph's immune to the last respect so i could play rough plus make it rain but with it not being choice specs or steel terror on golden go i'm actually not sure i ko the fur graph so instead what i might try to do is like burn the uh, iron hands instead a nasty plot on turn one if they leave that well they know what i was talking about yeah i'm just not quite sure i actually get this ko and if i go for a burn into a nasty plot turn two is looking really scary in my opinion I guess my fear is Iron Hands just clicks, like, Belly Drum on turn one here. That's a possibility, but we'll see. How else could I have led? If I led Tyranitar... Yeah, they didn't click Fake Out, but obviously they're not going to. They didn't switch. I'm curious if it's, like, a Volt Switch or a Sword Stance slash Belly Drum. Because burning Iron Hands this early on is super nice for us. Okay, they just go for Volt Switch, that's fine. If you Volt Switch into King Gambit, things get pretty interesting, because I can just uh, Water Terra next turn. Yep, and then Trick Room goes up now. I don't know, my other play was just Life Orb, Make It Rain, plus Play Rough onto Furigraph. I just don't know if that was actually going to be a knockout. Ah, uh, this position is so interesting, because, like, the obvious play for me is to water Terra. 
I'm just worried about a Kowtow Cleave plus a Hyper Voice combo. They know I have will o -Wisp, though, so they've got to be a little bit scared about this, right? I'm also, though, intrigued by the, by the idea of actually just straight up clicking will o -Wisp, or sorry, Terra Fairy will o -Wisp into King Gambit and then protect here. I'm going to try this out. The general idea behind this is I think that my opponent might be scared of... My opponent should be scared of both Pokemon, right? I pressure with Make It Rain from... King, uh, not King Gambit, Golden Go. And with Houndstone here, I pressure with Burn. And so they might be like, okay, well, you might Terra defensively your Golden Go. I'm going to go for a Dark-type attack onto your Houndstone. But that's where Fairy Terra comes up clutch. Yeah, so they Kowtow Cleave into that slot. Cool. It's Life Orb. And Psy Shock, okay. Nice, I survive. <sighs> if I just click Make It Rain there, though, I feel like I might have just won the game immediately, but it's fine, as long as I don't miss will o -Wisp here. I mean, a Burn Kowtow Cleave is still going to do a fair amount of damage to me, right? It's pretty scary. But... We'll see. I think I'm going to just switch into Tyranitar now. Houndstone's put in a lot of work for me already, and then click Make It Rain. The thing is, I didn't want to make a read last turn and just straight up attack with Golden Go, um, and then lose it to Kowtow Cleave. Especially because I didn't know the item on King Gambit yet. If it was Salt Vested, I was thinking Golden Go could survive, but the problem is that it is um, Life Orbed. Let's see how much Kowtow Cleave does to us. Okay, I survived with 39, but I suppose they'll Psy Shock there. Oh, that's a big mistake for them. Yeah, this is huge for me. I just get Life War Make It right now. And that just chaos for a graph. And King Gambit's one burn turn away from fainting. Nice. I wasn't even sure if Psyshock was going to get the knockout onto us, but I assume it would have. Um, they probably just thought, you know, Kowtow Cleave would have knocked out Golden Go. So, it's a fair assumption. But that's why I was, like, so gung-ho on burning the King Gambit with my um, Houndstone. So yeah, I'm glad to feature the utility side of Houndstone in this one because it was really valuable in burning both of my opponent's physical attackers so that even though they set up Trick Room, they are still not able to like really sweep me very quickly, right? So if Iron Hands comes back out, like that's not really applying much pressure. I think the main thing I want to be careful about is this uh, Belly Drum Iron Hands because like even with Burn, you still do a ton of damage with it. But Mimikyu comes out for my opponent. So Tyranitar is fairly well positioned. Two turns of Trick Room. I've got Tusk, and I've got you in the back. Uh, with the Burn on King Gambit, I'm not really that scared. I think I'm happy to just click Rock Slide here. I want to assume Mimikyu has Shadow Sneak, so I'm honestly just going to click Make It Rain here and sacrifice Golden Go to get the free switch into Great Tusk. Then I can just protect Great Tusk. And late game Headlong Rush now is looking really powerful. But yeah, I think that last turn is one in... It's like a total game-swinging turn, right? Where Golden Go actually survives when I was expecting it to potentially faint. Interesting. They go for a Terra here. It's gotta be with Mimikyu, right? What's a Terra into Fairy? Steel. Okay. Uh, I honestly think that, that benefits me, given that I have Great Tusk in the back. Iron Head into Tyranitar. Really solid damage. Faint from Life Orb. Okay. Well, I miss Rock Slide. Oh, that actually makes this interesting. Oh, but I'm also faster with Golden Go as well. That's very interesting. Given that, then I think Great Tusk should be fairly well positioned for this end game. Um, I was actually expecting it to like maybe Shadow Sneak Golden Go, Steel Terror on. That's pretty cool. And uh, they actually offer Willow as player. Okay, that's fine. Tyranitar has done everything I've needed to do in this game, in my opinion. Okay. So now we know it's Iron Hands in the back. Trick Room is about to expire. I have Earthquake and Headlong Rush. And play rough into Iron Hands with the... With the, the Houndstone. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to just low kick into Mimikyu here. 
sacrifice the golden go. Like, I want the two free switch-ins, essentially, right now. Fake out, sure. And Shadow Sneak. Okay, so Shadow Sneak and Will-O-Wisp on the Mimikyu. One would assume Trick Room as well. Yeah, that's fine. I guess where it's interesting is if the Iron Hands has Protect. Or sorry, if Mimikyu has Protect. But then you'd be running Shadow Sneak, Trick Room, Protect, Will-O-Wisp, which feels kind of odd to me. Because essentially what I want to do right now is just bring out the Great Tusk. And I I don't know if Earthquake's actually a KO here. Like, Headlong Rush onto Mimikyu just feels like the safest option, so that they can't set up Trick Room. Yep. I don't know, though. Maybe you actually have Protect. If you have Protect, this actually gets pretty interesting, in my opinion, because then the Iron Hands could target down Tusk. But with the Burn, I don't think, like, they really have enough damage for this end game. That's why I prioritized the Burn so much in the beginning. So let's see. Also, I still have this Houndstone just waiting in the back, right? So, yep, Mimikyu doesn't protect. And Long Rush gets the KO. Beautiful. I would love for them to KO Tyranitar so that I get the switch into Houndstone. And uh, it would be very satisfying to finish things off with the play rough here. Rock Slide. Okay. And they do Drain Punch into... Tusk. That was a critical hit, and I was at minus one defense, <laughs> and it still did like a third of my HP, so yeah. Tough end game position for them. Okay. Now we can just go for Assurance plus the Headlong Rush. I would have loved to end this game with a Houndstone play rough. I was actually thinking about clicking Earthquake, because... <laughs> It guarantees the knockout onto my own Tyranitar and gives me a free switch into Houndstone. And actually with Houndstone, it's more consistent to click um, Last Respects rather than play rough in the end games because you can miss. But I think the key thing here is we burnt both of their main attackers. So even though Trick Room was set up, it was fine. If I knew my damage calcs a little bit better, I would have thought about like Fairy Terra turn one with Houndstone, play rough, plus make it rain into Golden Go. I don't know if that's enough for a knockout, but if that just outright denies Trick Room, then it puts us into a very favorable position. I just didn't want to risk any damage calcs against the Phrygraph and figured like at least take the guaranteed burn onto Iron Hands. But I think the the main thing I can point to in this match is when they doubled up onto Houndstone. Like first of all, Citrus Berry huge, right? Because it allowed me to survive both of the attacks and then also get the burn. Um, but I also could have contemplated just attacking with Golden Go there, but I didn't want to really make the read. And yeah, like I said, if they were Assault Vest King Gambit rather than Life Orb, then that play that I made was really safe. Because then after the burn, if you don't have the Life Orb boost, I don't think you can knock out the Golden Go even with the double up. But it ended up working out anyway because they ended up clicking Hyper Voice that turn. So yeah, but that's the uh, support potential of Houndstone. No way! We have a Houndstone battle here. Their team is interesting. Houndstone, Lycanroc, Hippowdon, Amoongus, Ledge, and Palafin. Honestly, kind of feels like a singles team, mainly because I see the Houndstone, but very intrigued by it. One of the questions I have to ask is whether or not I even bring Tyranitar, but I guess Low Kick is still pretty valuable. Um, I feel like Great Tusk plus Talonflame is really strong here. I honestly don't think I want to bring Tyranitar. Oh, uh, like, I feel like I should bring Bundle. Bundle just gives me so much anxiety thanks to Hydro Pump's accuracy. Alright, I'm gonna go Talonflame. Tusk. And then it's two of these three. Golden Go. Especially with Water Terra. I mean, the reason I think Golden Go is nice here is because of immunity to Spore. They don't have a Ghost Resist, and so late game, Houndstone looks pretty sweet here. I don't know, their whole team is weak to Iron Bundle, though. How could I not bring that, right? Alright, I'll go with Bundle and then um, my Houndstone. Yeah, like I literally, literally can Hydro Pump or Freeze Dry everything on their team for super effective damage. But that's the thing with Bundle. I think it, like, Bundle's such an interesting Pokemon in this format to me because it's frail. And it reminds me of Regieleki in previous formats, or in Sword and Shield, but the thing is, Regieleki had the potential to Dynamax, whereas Bundle doesn't, like, Dynamax doesn't exist, right? So, uh, okay, they go with 
Tyranitar, not Tyranitar, Lycanroc plus the Hippowdon. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine just clicking Tailwind and Earthquake here, honestly. That's sick. That's really cool. Acceleroc. Now, the thing is, with Lycanroc in VGC, a lot of players use, like, Rock Slide, Close Combat, Endeavor, and Sand Tomb. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Very interesting. Okay. Um... I'm going to go into Bundle and just Protect Earthquake. Anyway, what a cool way to just deal with Talonflame on turn one. I was going to say, basically, like, that's not that common on Talonflame, so in my head, I didn't even think about it as a possibility. And I was like, yeah, well, if I get Tailwind up, then I can just sweep through pretty easily, right? But without Tailwind, this game becomes substantially more challenging. So, really cool stuff. Uh, I'm just going to Protect an Earthquake again right now. So, now that I would seen that, if I were to re-lead against this, what would I do? Mm. Wouldn't lead Talon Flame. Honestly, I think Bundle plus Tusk is interesting because I could just bait the damage into Bundle and then just Earthquake instead. That's not that bad. Powdon protects, okay. But that implies Lycanroc is attacking. Cool. That could have been really scary. I'm actually very surprised they didn't target Tusk, but I think it makes sense because my opponent's probably like, well, Iron Bundle beats my entire team, so let me just try to KO you right now. Okay. So yeah, normally I would expect a combination of like Endure, Rock Slide, Close Combat, Protect, Endeavor, but Excel Rock is really cool to deal with Talonflame. And Talonflame's usage in this format's definitely been rising, so I think it's a very smart tech. Anyway, it's interesting because my opponent just committed Protect onto their... Palafin comes out. Palafin, Palafin, Palafin. I mean, I want to just Hydro Pump into this, and then just Headlong Rush into this. They protect. I mean, if I KO the Hippowdon, you can't change forms unless you flipped her now. This is why I hate Iron Bundle, though. <laughs> Oh, like, rely on 80% is so stressful. It's, especially when you're not a bulky Pokemon in return. Okay, they at least click Yawn, so it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, if I had just hit that Hydro Pump and hip out on Fanes, then Palafin, like, committed Protect. It can't transform unless... No, sorry, you can't even flip turn. Yeah, you, you can't switch. So, that's a shame. Uh, happens, though. I think the debate here is whether or not I actually make a read and straight up just attack anyway, because the obvious place to switch out into my Houndstone right now. Yeah, it's fine. And I'll just click Headlong Rush again here. I mean, the thing about Hippowdon is that it's a really passive Pokemon, so the good thing is that it's not like applying that much offensive pressure, at least right now. Hmm. They're gonna stay in with Palafin and go for a Terra. Okay. I like that play. What Terra is it? Grass? No, it's just water. Uh, does Jet Punch KO us? With Mystic Water, I would think so, right? Let's find out. Yeah, it does. Nice play. Nice play. And did they click Yawn again? Oh, it's just slack off. Okay. Well, let's see how I approach this game now. Um, we've got Terra Free Dry. But then Jet Punch is stronger into me. 
Man, if I were them, I would protect Palafin personally, but they might just, like, wave crash straight up here. But I'm really afraid of Yawn now from Hippowdon. I don't know if Freeze Dry in Last Respects even gets the KO, to be honest. I'm gonna double up and hit Paladon. No, oh, they just went for Jet Punch. Okay, wait, I think that's okay, right? Yeah, that does less than half. Nice. Okay, Last Respects. Oh, Freeze Dry definitely would have KO'd. But, okay, Hector Punk hits this time around. So, Palafin can change forms. <laughs> and a Jet Punch is not a two-hit KO onto the Houndstone. Although, I wouldn't have minded if they... Does Sandstorm put me in berry rate? Oh, no, no. Sorry. There's no Sandstorm damage here. What an interesting game. Is their last one going to be Houndstone? <laughs> oh, I might still just lose to their Houndstone then. I guess I could protect this, right? Oh. Plus, that's interesting. How fast is their Houndstone is my question, because I want to... Terra this def... I mean, I can't protect here, so Last Respect will just KO me. I actually just lose if they just Last Respects this, right? I have no idea how fast they are. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so many surprises. Uh, yeah, very interesting. I don't know what kind of Houndstone set they are either, but it would be so fitting if we drop a game to an opposing Houndstone. Okay, so there's Protect. Oh, this is huge. Yeah, Shadow Sneak. I survived that. Nice. I think that allows me to win. Uh, unless Jet Punch also does enough to me. Ooh, it's going to be really close. It's really close. Oh, they didn't Jet Punch. We win. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Fairy Terra saved me there. And end up wave crashing into Palafin. Or sorry, into... That's interesting, actually. So they just assumed they were going to be slower with their Houndstone, but... It's not like this Houndstone's max speed either, so I'm really curious how the speed interaction actually would have played out. But yeah, the downside with Baby Palafin is that uh, you have Baby Palafin. Uh, it'd be kind of fun to click Destiny Bond here. And freeze Dry. Okay, there's Jet Punch. Yeah, we survived on 9. So even if they doubled up onto me last turn, I would have been okay. Although Destiny Bond awkwardly will not work here because the sand is just going to... Oh, no, no. Sand is not going to finish me off. I keep expecting it to KO us because I'm like, oh, this is not a Rock-type Pokemon. But Free Strike gets the knockout on to Palafin. Nice. Yeah, I think the main thing here is that my opponent just didn't have that much offense, right? Like, Hippowdon is a really passive Pokemon. Slack off, Yong, as we saw. It's not bad, but that's part of the reason why people prefer Tyranitar over Hippowdon in VGC. Because Tyranitar is just way more consistent in terms of damage dealing. And Tyranitar itself is still a really bulky Pokemon as well. So, yeah. But really interesting team for my opponent. Definitely have not played against, like, Excel Rock, Lycan Rock in a while. And they, you know, put me in a big deficit deficit by just eliminating Talonflame immediately. But even with that, we were able to win. Mainly because, one, Palafin just never transformed. And, two, the Hippowdon was pretty passive. This is one of those classic scenarios in VGC. This happens pretty frequently when you or your opponent might have like a more support-oriented Pokemon. And a support-oriented Pokemon is just kind of actually taking pressure away from you because it's not able to actually dish out damage. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing is when I switched out the Iron Bundle, they could have clicked Yawn into that slot again, which would have put me in a much worse position. But instead, they tried to recover with Slack Off. And that Slack Off made things a lot easier for me because it meant that I didn't have to keep cycling through to break through the Yawn cycling. So, yeah. Alright, it's been a fast round of games today, so we'll play one final one here. This is a pretty hyper-offensive team. Armourouge, Volcarona, Mousehold, Annihilate, Fluttermane, and the Bundle. Normally against Annihilate and Mousehold, I like to go Talonflame plus Tusk, and I think that's pretty solid here as well. Pretty happy with Tyranitar and Houndstone in the back. Although I think Bundle and Golden Go are good here. My main problem with them is that I think they're... Like, Bundle's just so frail, right? And it goes down too easily. Uh, they also have a decent amount of special defense on their team. 
Golden Go is tempting, but I basically am forced to defensively Terra Golden Go because they have, what, four Pokemon that hit me for super effective? Armor Rouge, Volcarona, Annihilate, and the Fluttermane. So I'm decently comfortable with Talonflame and the uh, Tusk here. I think what becomes interesting is that they lead with the Armor Rouge. Because Armor Rouge could Wide Guard or Grass Terra. Now we have Taunt, so I could potentially like protect Great Tusk, Taunt, Armor Rouge, turn one, then like uh, Brave Bird, Earthquake, or uh, Headlong Rush, turn two. If they go with Mouse Hold and Annihilate, I'm probably just clicking Brave Bird and Headlong Rush immediately into the Annihilate slot. The only fear there is if they are Population Bomb Mouse Hold, which isn't that common, but is in best of one. Like, I ran into, what, Scarf Annihilate the other day with Population Bomb on a uh, Mouse Hold, so you should never just count it out. Okay, it is Mouse Hold and Annihilate. Uh, yeah. I want to go Brave Bird. And headlong rush. Ideal output here: mouse hold protects, and eye tries to attack, or mouse hold just goes for beat up, and we KO an eye lape. That would be the dream. Worst outcome: an eye lape protects, uh, population bomb into talon flame. So this is actually a pretty volatile turn. I'm just making an educated guess. It's not population bomb since most mouse hold and eye lape combos aren't. But if they actually are an offensive set with mouse hold, this is a disaster. Because they could final Gambit Population Bomb. Actually, that would be so sick. Oh, although no, we'd have priority from Brave Bird. So that actually wouldn't really work. Uh, if they just go for Follow Me, I think that's fine. No Follow Me. Okay. Brave Bird almost just one-shots Annihilate. Are they beat up? <laughs> uh, Annihilate will survive the beat-ups though, right? Oh, so close. It would have been so funny to see Annihilate just faint to the beat-up. And they will get a Rage Fist off, but that's fine. Uh, Earthquake would have been better for me there, though. Uh, the reason I went for that, by the way, was to cover for Annihilate going for a Terra. Uh, we were so close to picking up the KO, but that's fine. That being said, Annihilate being faster and getting that knockout, or sorry, uh, getting that much damage onto me changes this game dramatically, right? Because now you can potentially bring out Flutter main. They go in a bundle, okay. Bundles booster energy. So it's like scary, but with Tyranitar plus the Houndstone in the back, I actually don't feel that bad about my positioning because Tyranitar is really good into their side right now. Like, AV Tyranitar is just so strong into their team. Now that Annihilate's out of the way. I'm happy to click Tailwind here, even though I don't, ex don't expect to get it off, and I'll just protect the Tusk here so I get a free switch into Tyranitar. Okay, bundle clicks icy wind. Uh, if you don't have population bomb on mouse hold, oh, I get crit. I was gonna say if you don't have population bomb, I could get tailwind up. Ooh, a cheeky encore. I like that. It's fine. I mean, it just locks me into brave bird. It's not even that bad. Do I faint from recoil there? Oh, I didn't faint. That's really awkward. Ooh, we really wanted to faint there. I guess I could just switch Tusk out here, though. Brave Bird. And just go into Tyranitar. I guess they could freeze dry in, or sorry, Hydro Pump into the Tusk slot. So, like, the debate here is whether or not it was worth it to actually make this switch. Maybe I should have just Tailwinded on turn one since they have so much speed in the back, but. It's not like Tyranitar was outspeeding the bundle even with Tailwind up, right? Okay. Mouse switches out. Fluttermane. Yeah, Asalva's Tyranitar is just so position, uh, well positioned for their team right now. So that's good at least. I'm just worried. Like, the Icy Wind pressure from the bundle is certainly scary, right? I think you have to click Icy Wind here. It's also risky because you can actually miss. But they're going to connect. Yeah, that's fine. So I break Focus Ash on the Flutter main now. Uh, I could go into Houndstone or I could go into Tusk.
If I go into Tusk, they can Icy Wind me. And I'll go into Houndstone here. I think I could go Houndstone, and they're forced to Icy Wind. Otherwise, like, yeah, I think my play is Defensive Terra here, Last Respects, into Fluttermane. And just Assurance into Bundle. I guess I don't know if Assurance KOs, if they're defensive. Terra defensively, last respects. Yeah, I'll just click Rock Slide instead, actually. Yeah, this works. I think Houndstone's very well positioned for this endgame. Fluttermane switches, which is a good switch, but it's fine for now. I wonder if I can win this game with a... Um destiny bond actually okay if they're making this play i'm thinking they might just actually hydro pump tyranitar outright but the thing is that like the part of the reason why i prioritized KOA and Nilab so much in this early matchup was to position tyranitar the way i did uh, bundle just protects okay that's totally fine i get a free rock slide off i could just play rough rock slide this next turn right and like a helping hand hydro pump shouldn't even ko me Rocks I should do around what 30, 40 to mouse at least. Yep. Okay, safety goggles on mouse hold. Uh I don't mind clicking play rough here into the bundle slot, forcing a follow me, and if they don't follow me, we can just maybe KO bundle. So play rough and rock slide. Yeah, I think, like, at, at this point, it's a little too passive for them, right? Okay, they Terra. It, water Terra? I mean, I don't even think Helping Hand Hydro Pump Water Terra KOs Assault Vest Tyranitar with Sandstorm. That's just how bulky Assault Vest Tyranitar is, but let's see. Okay, they just go for Follow Me. Then I definitely don't think you're KOing, but I guess I could be wrong on that. I mean, if it KOs, I actually probably lose the game, right? Yeah, it doesn't. Nice. Uh, play rough misses. Okay, rocks I connect still. Doesn't knock out either though. Oh. Well, I might actually lose off that. No way. Because it was a pretty much a guaranteed win, I think, if we connected there. Uh, I should have I should have gone for the knockout onto one of the two mons. I'm gonna play rough into Bundo again, and Rock Slide again. They should just follow me and Hydro Pump again. Bundo protected. Oh, they just double protect. Okay. I think if anything that may benefit me because I can cycle Tyranitar out now and reset the sand. Alright. Last room Sandstorm. So Mousewood should follow me here right now. I will play rough into bundle again, switch Tyranitar into Great Tusk. Yeah, that miss really cost things, but I think I also could have potentially attacked with Tyranitar, used another move. I don't know if any of the other moves would have gotten a knockout anyway, though. Yeah. Yep, Mouse Hold goes for follow me. There's Hydro Pump. They targeted Houndstone. Good targeting. I uh, If I stayed in with Tyranitar, that would have been a double KO, and then it's 3v1 against Fluttermane. And I don't think Fluttermane could win from that position. Oh, actually, if I had Dazzling Gleam, it still could. 
Uh, this booster energy is such a pain for me to go through. Hmm. Yeah, it is a shame we missed earlier. Uh, man, if I had Protect on... The problem is I think Bundle is just enough HP to survive one hit, right? Because essentially I want to switch Houndstone out into Tyranitar right now. And Protect. But I don't think I can win unless- because Houndstone doesn't have Protect, unless they missed a Hydro Pump. That's my win con. Oh, this was so close, but yeah, the booster energy plus the Iron Bundle actually hanging around, plus me missing play rough all kind of added up a decent amount. But also, like, I could have Tailwinded with Talonflame on turn 1. If I had the speed advantage, this, this end game would have been actually a lot easier. But I wasn't sure how fast their Annihilate was going to be relative to our Great Tusk. Because I've had games where the Annihilate is just slower than me, and I just get the knockout on turn 1. Okay, so Tusk protects. They went for Icy Wind. So they could still lose off, like, misses with any of their attacks as well. I assume it's Dazzling... Oh, I mean, you could just move Blaster, actually. Yeah, they had Dazzling Gleam. Okay, so actually, even if I had forced the 3v1, I might have still lost... Let me think about the situation earlier. Unless Bundle actually faints from Sandstorm here, but I think it has like 1 HP after Sand. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> fairly sure that would be the case, but yeah. Uh, my win con is an Icy Wind miss from Bundle, or for some reason they get a little bit nervous and click uh, Hydro Pump. I don't have Protect here, unfortunately. If we had Protect, this was a guaranteed win. But it's a shame. I didn't get to utilize Destiny Bond today. Uh, last respect, Slaughter Main. What I do with this is irrelevant, right? Because they always... <sighs> Actually, if you click Hydro Pump and you miss... Well, if you click Hydro Pump and you miss, I just win the game immediately. I think, like, what I do with Tusk basically doesn't really matter. So, I'll just Headlong Rush. This was so close. What a battle. It was a fun one for sure, though. And I definitely could have played a little bit better. Yeah, they go for Icy Wind and they don't miss. Okay. <sighs> Wish we could have seen how it would have played out if play rough hit earlier, but yep. Like, this team has a few moves I can miss, obviously, and with uh, the... Yeah, and we're not faster than Fluttermane anymore. Wow. Talk about margins, right? It's like if the, the bundle just has one or two more points of damage there, then it faints and we just outspeed and KO the Fluttermane. So that's kind of the positioning I was trying to go for. There's definitely opportunity to play better in this game, i.e. with the lead. Like, I could have gone, like, Tailwind Earthquake. Especially because they, like, I, I just was nervous of them targeting Talonflame, I guess. Um, and I was like, okay, if I can conserve Focus Ash while also not getting out the Annihilate, it's really good. Honestly, props to my opponent, though, because I think I have a significant team matchup relative to them there. And the way they uh, maneuvered it after the early game was really smart. And the way they positioned Bundle was clever. An another turn to talk about, actually, by the way, was when I went for... The um, the last respects and then the uh, the mouse hold switched in because the mouse hold was actually able to absorb that uh, hit. If I had clicked play rough there, yeah, I think if like I knew play rough was a KO onto the um, onto the flutter main there, like I didn't know the damage calc, I didn't know how bulky their flutter main was either, right? So I wanted to just pressure with the one hit knockout, but play rough would have been way more consistent for me there because it would have accelerated the tempo of the match pretty significantly. So yeah, I think there were definitely multiple turns where I could have played better in this one, but uh, this was a game where I think my opponent had a bad matchup and they played super well to essentially get out of it, especially after losing Annihilate so quickly. So yeah, props to them there. Turn one, basically I was like, well, if I'm faster than Annihilate here, they're just going to be in a ton of trouble, but it uh, turns out they were faster and the margins were close, right? Annihilate almost fainted to the Brave Bird plus their own beat up combo, but it had about like 5%-ish or so, and that was all I needed to get a big hit off into my Annihilate uh, or into my uh, Great Tusk. So definitely some opportunities I played better throughout the course of that one, but that's also a game where I think my opponent did a great job maneuvering things. So yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thanks so much as always for joining me and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.